Good morning, everyone. It's another beautiful day here. Uh, wait a minute. It's cloudy. It's gonna rain most of the week, sounds like. Horses are out for today. Dogs are gone on the run. Still no Aussie. Oh. So, from our last video, I, uh, trying to figure out who that pharaoh is right well it, it it's it's been an interesting study uh it's not possible really to figure out who that pharaoh is during joseph's time and with the limited knowledge that i have about all this stuff it would take me I don't know how long trying to figure out exactly okay when was that pharaoh there this no okay what's in it so I went and I'm going okay so I had I found one two three four five six seven or eight pharaohs right? and then I'm going Ugh. okay when was it they were about some of the same time then I've got hmm that's a hard one. It's a hard one to figure out. That the many of the go and look up different uh, studies done on different pharaohs, and the time frame is this is also different. Right? Uh, yes, I took into to consideration that there's the the first and the th second and the third of whatever. So it and it seems to be. The scholars out there and all this are not, they can't, they don't seem to be able to yeah, come together and actually uh, just come to some kind of a consensus at least. That's what I found. Uh, interesting, on one of them that I read up on, a scholar said that if you don't take the Bible into consideration, then you're never going to get the whole story. So scripture actually, and historic records this and that historical records of you know for example egypt and all that but together with the bible and even the quran right, and the torah that's, that's when you can start making you know this, this these fragmented parts into a still a rather unstable whole but it's better than what there is all out there about it all that's what i found interestingly enough Potiphar, the Egyptian, that was the first one with, uh, there is, there's quite a bit about that guy. Um, it's, it's not just, uh, let's see, did I write more down than that? No. He's definitely in the, uh, Egyptian historical, uh, whatever they found, whatever they put together. That's interesting. And then Joseph with the name Safanat Penea, which is, you take a different Bible and it's spelled a little differently. Uh, it's uh, interesting. That one's, And it means one who discovers hidden things, right? Oh, okay, so it could be someone that you know, knew about dreams, how to uh, tell about dreams and all that. It was interesting. Then there's a currency that they found uh, in ancient, of ancient Egypt that uh, has the head of Joseph on it and mentions both of his names, actually Joseph and his Egyptian name. And I'm going, okay, so when did they find that? And when was that currency? And you could, as I said, study till kingdom come on this stuff and still not be 100% sure. And again, what I found with all that is just because the people who are studying this and all that are just not willing to come together. Some of them believe in God. And I want to just keep it all within scripture, but not, you know, the historical, the, the, the evolutionary process of earth. Then you have the opposite side of that. And then, you know, it's like, ah, you know, get together and do this right. So again, in order to, okay, 
what's true, what's not. When was this actually happening? Was it happening like this? Well, we'll never find the truth or answers to it. If, if there are people who are looking for a little bit more info than just what there is, does it matter? Well, I'm reading the Bible right now. So I'm going, okay, let's see what else is there. When I come across certain things and just found again, <laughs> many people are being paid to do all these studies, this and that, right? And they can't come together and just kind of form this team and saying, come on now, guys, we can do this. With all, without all the discrepancies and stuff, right? Yes? Yeah, well, anyway, it's, it's again, ugh. But I liked that one uh, dude who uh, came up with, uh, if you really want, uh, the scripture has helped the theologians, the, uh, uh, the historians, the, uh, uh, there is a, the geologians, the, you know, ha helped out a lot to try to determine certain things that been going on a long time ago, right? Yes? Yeah, why not? Again, I mentioned that before, the six days of creation are identical to the six periods of evolution. Just saying, who came first, the chicken or the egg? The Bible or uh, that type of knowledge? I'm just saying. So, there it is. Uh, yes. There's one thing, what I ended up doing is, because I got so overwhelmed with all them pharaohs. <laughs> Again, it says, wait a minute. That one just said that that pharaoh was at that time, but that one now says that that pharaoh was at that time. Then it's like, oh, but they're not sure. So it's like this mix-up stuff going on. One pharaoh was suggested to be it that only was in in power for eight to ten years. Okay, that that wouldn't make sense, all right? Well, anyway, so uh, then I went and I tried to figure out, okay, which one is depicted as a really good pharaoh? Which, again, is really amazing to me. So they have the name. They have uh, about the time. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's way off. Then they have uh, the wives, the children, the, you know, how they died, the mummies, and all the, the, the whatever. But there's very little about their actual reign. You know, and how, you know, there's, some of them were really... Uh, powerful and 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 pro egypt really prospered you know there is one which is uh Sesostris the third in the 19th hundreds of bc uh who minimalized power and influence of the feudal nobility there was a st also strong management going on okay strong management hmm okay well, who was that? It was Joseph had, had did real good, managed the whole country really well. So that's one thing that I'm kind of oh, oh, oh. but it, otherwise, the guy sounds that Pharaoh sounds kind of yeah, taking over Nubia, this and that. So there's warring going on. Okay, does that not include being a good ruler for your own country? Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, I guess I wanted to hear something different than that. So then I went and said, I'm going, to, I'm going to go and check out. Did that seven-year famine even happen? Was there a famine like that in ancient Egypt? Yes, there was. There actually was. And it was during the time of the of Pharaoh de Djoser. And, uh, but the timing is off. And he had dreams. He had a dream to rebuild the temple of, what's that god? The, the river god, Khnum. Okay. Which, that's what they needed, was water, right? So, okay, that's it. Are you getting my drift here? Yeah. So, again, why are the pharaohs, the names of the pharaohs, not mentioned in the Bible? I find that odd. Yet, everyone else is mentioned in it. Yeah? Yes? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I can't, I don't know what to say about that. Maybe they wanted to all stay anonymous. <laughs> okay. I have no idea. All right, let's read our next. Uh, we're on 46. Jacob leaves for Egypt. That's Genesis 46. 
So Israel set out with all his possessions. Jake, that's Jacob, by the way, Israel. I find that also interesting how they switch this around. I guess until Israel becomes the whole tribe's name. I guess. I don't know. Arriving at Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. Interesting on how that, again, how is that to his father, Isaac, the God of his father, Isaac? Well, that should be Jacob's God, too. His people's God. Okay, whatever. God spoke to Israel in a vision at night. Jacob, Jacob, he said, here I am. He replied, I am El, God of your father. Well, there it goes. He said, do not be afraid of going down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. Here it is again. I shall go, I shall go down to Egypt with you, and I myself shall bring you back again, and Joseph's hand will close your eyes. So Jacob left Beersheba. Israel's sons conveyed their father, Jacob, their little children, and their wives in the wagons Pharaoh had sent to fetch, them, fetch him. So Jacob wasn't sure if he wanted to go. Sounds like God had to give him a little push. I would say that probably would be a very arduous journey for an old man. I think the desire to he see Joseph and of course his youngest one was greater than the pains and aches and pains. Why would God even have to tell him to go there? Well, anyway, taking their livestock and all that they had acquired in Canaan, they arrived in Egypt, Jacob and all his offspring. With him to Egypt, he brought his sons and grandsons, his daughters and granddaughters, all his offspring. All right, we got that. Jacob's family. <laughs> so here we go again. We got... Every bit of their names. These were the names of the Israelites. Jacob is in, in his descendants who arrived in Egypt. Reuben, Jacob's firstborn. See, I told you it was the firstborn. And the sons of Reuben, Hanach, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Oh, there's at least one I did not, not recognize. The sons of Simeon. Jemuel, Yamin, Ohad, Yachin, Zohar, and Shal, the son of the Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi, 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 the genes, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Judah, Er, Onan, Shelah, Peres, and Sarah. Er and Onan had died in Canaan. Oh. Oh. He had two sons that died. Judah did. And Hazron and Hamul, sons of Perez. Oh. The sons of Ishakar. Tola, Puva, Yashut. And Shemron, the sons of Sebulun. Who was that? Oh, one of his boys. Sarad, Elon, and Yahalil. These were the sons that Leah had born to Jacob in Padan Aram. Beside, oh, 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 that other, no, no, no. Yes. Okay. Well, 
Oh, there's some stuff missing that I don't remember from four, but okay. These were the sons that Leah had borne to Jacob in Padam Aram, besides his daughter Dinah. In all his sons and daughters numbered 33. The sons of Gad, Siphion, Hagi, Shuni, Esbon, Eri, Arodi, and Areli. The sons of Asher, Yemna, Jishwa, Jishwi, Beria, with their sister Sarah. The sons of Beria, Eber and Malchiel, the, those were the sons of Silpa, whom Laban gave to his daughter Leah. Oh. She bore these to Jacob, 16 persons. Yay, 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 the dude was busy. The sons of Rachel, wife of Jacob, Joseph and Benjamin, born to Joseph in Egypt were Manasseh and Ephraim. Sons of Asenath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. The sons of Benjamin, oh, Bela, Becher, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rush, Mupim, Hupim, and Ar. These were the sons that Rachel bore to Jacob. Fourteen persons in all. Wait a minute. No, that's not what Rachel bore to Jacob. Well, I guess she was the ancestor of, of uh, Benjamin's sons or the grandmother, but she didn't bore them. Well, anyway, I know how it's meant, but again, people will understand this one way or another. Boy, Benjamin was old enough to have family too, so... Okay, all right, all right. The sons of Don, Hushim, the sons of Naphtali, Yazil, Guni, Yezer, and Shalem. These were the sons of Bilah, whom Laban gave to his daughter Rachel. Right. She bore these to Jacob, seven persons in all. Altogether, the members of Jacob's family who arrived with him in Egypt, his own issue, not counting the wives of Jacob's sons, numbered 66 all told. With Joseph's sons born to him in Egypt, two persons, the members of Jacob's family who went to Egypt totaled 70. 70 people. So what about the rest of the people? So it was just his family. What about the rest of them? Wasn't this a big old tribe? I don't know. It doesn't say. Joseph welcomes them. Israel sent Judah ahead to Joseph so that Judah might present himself to Joseph in Goshen. When they arrived in Goshen, Joseph had his chariot made ready and went up to Goshen to meet his father, Israel. Did they not tell him? They might not, not have told him yet. As soon as he appeared, he threw his arms around his neck and for a long time wept on his shoulder. Israel said to Joseph, no, they did not. Now I can die, now that I have seen you in person and seen you still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and his father's family, I shall go back and break the news to Pharaoh. I shall tell him my brothers and my father's family who were in Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds and look after livestock and have brought their flocks and cattle and all their possessions. <clears throat> Thus, when Pharaoh summons you and asks, what is your occupation? You are to say, ever since our boyhood, your servants have looked after livestock, we and our fathers before us, so that you can stay in the Goshen region, for the Egyptians have a horror of all shepherds. <laughs> what? Really? Why is that? A horror of all shepherds. So their safety is somewhat questioned now. And I see now I've got something else I'm going to check out. Why were the Egyptians afraid of shepherds? Right? I'm not getting it. Well, anyway, there it is. Joseph reunited with his father. It's been many 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 years huh. anyway. 
interesting. It's been many, many years. One could think again, what's the true significance of that story? Uh, I find that reading the Bible, you, you got to be, you got, you got to, you don't have to do a thing. I guess one starts to read between the lines somewhat too. I'm not sure what kind of a significance a story like that would have in today's world, except for. Here are God's people. They're moving around. They're like nomads. Moving around many ways. And then they settle someplace. Kind of have to make some deals with the people there. And uh, even though they want to kind of stay pure bloods and all that. They get mixed up anyway. Right? Yeah. Get mingled up. This and that. Uh, mainly out of their own desires, which again, and then here now they're moving to from Canaan to Egypt, and uh, uh, surely uh, there's going to be some mingling going on there too, and it's just interesting on how, in a way, uh, though, everybody wants to be it, right? Yeah, everybody wants to be kind of it everywhere. <laughs> You're it. Success is a big thing everywhere. And uh, if one doesn't attain it, uh, one's life just bad. <laughs> and if one attains it, life still seems to be bad. <laughs> I think that this story in a way also tells us that, uh, again, uh, okay, how important is the little part in the beginning where J Jacob goes and he asks for guidance, right, with the sacrifice of the whatever. Of the, he's asking God for guidance. And then, and then in the dream, right, God says, I'm going to go with you. Right? Go on. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll go with you. So God's good with traveling, too. Uh, seems like it doesn't. Uh, of course, God's not stuck anywhere. God's all over the world right? where he's accepted and willingly embraced. And uh, I find that interesting in that story uh, on how people traveled and uh, into uh, new territories uh, as well. You know, territories, I mean, discovering, uh, discovering other places, other people. And in a way, it seems it's always about working together, right? Uh, Working together and abstain uh, uh, temptations. Well, anyway, it'll be interesting to read, to keep on reading. We're still just in the beginning of that book. Hey, it's going to take a long time. I don't know, I guess I'm huh, starting this condition. You know, God's kind of saying, I'll be right there with you. You're not going anywhere, like spirit world, until this is done. Important to do. Okay. I think, again, if one looks closer into it all, like I said, you know, you don't get to stumbling over certain things and going, well, okay, are these all just stories? And one can see why people who maybe read the Bible suddenly go, that's all a bunch of humbug. <laughs> but the thing is, again, even out of fictional stories, and I'm not saying these are fictional, it's just written down the way it was possible to write them down at the times when these things all happened. Remember on how there's this game where you whisper you know, a sentence in someone's ear and then it goes around. By the time it comes all around, the sentence like, there's still parts of it still there, but <laughs> certain things have been added to it, you know, or left out. 
I think with the Bible, it's kind of the same. You come across certain things where you go, why was that left out? Though, it should be in there. How is this, according to, with the New Testament and the Ten Commandments, why were they so freely just having children, one God with all them women? <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? And the uh, kind of the uh, conflict that that caused as well. Now here's Joseph goes to Egypt, uh, marries one lady and has two children. Oh, well, interesting. Huh? And how blessed is he? Okay, just saying. As far as I know, Joseph and his wife had a really, really good relationship and really supported each other in their work as well. That's what I heard <laughs> could be a lie, too. <laughs> all right, all right. But um, uh, God does not just exist through the Bible. That's a textbook that you study and kind of just get to know a little bit. The history of God's people. Right? Yes? Yeah. Anywho. So, and then, uh, of course, when you're out there and you really look around, I had an interesting uh, little conversation with a very young person yesterday. And um, he said, yeah, you know, people are sick out there, this and that. But if they actually were to walk around with their eyes open while they're not feeling so well, or one of theirs is not feeling so well, they'd find uh, suddenly an herb or a plant that they're going, oh, that kind of attracted my eyes to snap, go study up on it a little bit and and might help uh, the sickness. I thought that was interesting coming out of the mouth of a really young man. <laughs> Whoa, you're good. You're really good. And uh, that's exactly how it is. Now, who would guide you towards that plant? Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, this has happened to me many times before. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm listening to this young person. I go, wow, that's really encouraging. Anywho, so there it is. Right? Yeah. You find God in many ways. Knowing that uh, this can't just be all happenstance or, yeah, you know, good luck to me, good luck to someone else or this or that. If you start really paying attention, you start to realize spirit, spirit life is real. God is real. Our heavenly parent is real. <coughs> and we teach accordingly. Huh? Yes. Yeah. That's it. Anywho, so there's, that's all I wanted to share today. It's cold. I made a fire, actually. Look, I'm wearing my hat. <laughs> I've got my big jacket on. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> it's nice and warm here. As you can see, we see we have them curtains up here. Yeah, they're up in the winter time. Closed them down. Curtains, they're sheets. <laughs> closed them down. There's one over here as well. And uh, that, and if that's all closed down, though, it's just thin material. It gets really warm in here, <laughs> which is nice. That's one room, that's all you need, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Instead of the whole big house, yeah, not needed. Yeah. One room for warmth for us all here. You can fit a lot of people in here in this room. Yeah. Like Then it gets even warmer. Not only that, but you know in a small room like this, right? everybody congregates up to the warm room. Suddenly you have these, con these conversations going on and, and talk about the older times, or this or that, or, or as I said, something interesting like I did with this young man about food and uh, soil conservation and this and that, you know, which you know, was great. You know? So he gave me another, he mentioned uh, some uh, ancient civilization in uh, South America where you know, the, the the, the soil that they produced and the way they, the fertilizer that they had was really amazing, you know. And, but anyways, we got talking about that. I wrote it down because I want to go and check that out. Uh, uh, yeah, I heard about that before, but I never really checked it out. Now it came to my attention. Uh, now I want to know more. 
And uh, yeah, so anyway, so uh, yes, small space. You know, we just sit and uh, and have that. Uh, how do you say? Give and take yeah? among elevated minds, elevated heart to minds. It's a beautiful thing. God's right there with us every time. Yeah. Yes. Oh, just saying. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to share today. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. Looks like it's going to get cold, rain, sleet. Yeah. Be careful out on the road. And I will talk to you all another time.